Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. In this video, we will be covering the topics of map, filter and reduce functions in Python. Now, Python provides several functions that enable functional approach to programming. And since functional uh, programming is all about expressions, um, some of these expression oriented functions of Python are um, lambda functions, list comprehensions, map filter, uh, map filter and reduce. Now we've already covered the topic of lambda and list comprehensions. Um, now let's cover the topics of map, filter and reduce. So to start off, let's look at the map function. The map function takes in two attributes, a function and a sequence. Um, a function is basically some defined, some user defined function or any function. Uh, a sequence is basically an iterable object like a list or um, a tuple, for example, or a bunch of lists and tuples as well. So let's look at an example. So one of the most common operations that we do with something like a list is uh, doing an operation on each of the elements in the list and then outputting a new list with uh, the the values as uh, whatever we have modified to the original items of the uh, list. So if we what if we did the square of all of these items in this list and we, we want to create a list based on that. So we can basically iterate through it and we can do a square function and then append those values to a new list called uh, squared. And when we do this, uh, for example, over here, you can see when we print squared, we should get the list of uh, whatever square values we have uh, for the original list. But this is uh, slightly a bit tedious. And what if we had a method that or a what if we had a, a technique wherein we could um, basically pass a function that we have uh, that we want to do and a sequence on which we want to apply this and we pass it to a function and this function basically takes care of um, applying whatever operations we want to do on each element of a sequence. So this is where the map function comes in use. So let's look at uh, how we use the map function over here. So if you look at this, I've defined a square function. So the square function basically returns, uh, takes an argument x and returns the square of it. And I have a map function, which takes the square um, function as one of the arguments and uh, the, I, the list or an iterable as the second argument. So this map function creates a map object, if you see here. So let's just do it one by one. So I'm creating my list and I'm going to create my function called square. And I'm going to send this to the map function. So I'm sending this, uh, the first argument as the function that I want to do. And the second argument as the list that I want to apply it on. Now let's list out all the items that are in this map object. So if you see, it creates me a list with basically the squared items. And this is exactly what we needed. And another way of doing the same thing would be just going through a for loop in each of the map objects and printing each, which would give me the same results. So if you see here, I found a very neat way of passing a function and an iterable and um, using the map function to apply each operation that is part of the function or applying the function on each item in the iterable. So as you've seen, we basically passed in a user defined function and we applied it to each item in the list. Then the map calls the square function on each list item and collects all the return values into a new list. And because map expects a function to be passed in, it also happens to be one of the places where lambda functions are appearing a lot. So let's look at the an example where we do the same operation using a lambda function. So if you see here, I have a lambda function where I'm passing it as the function argument. And what this lambda function takes is some variable x or some argument x it does its square and it returns that x. And this x is basically going to come from each element that is present in this list called items. And when we list down these, you will see it basically does the same thing for us. It creates us list with squared items. Now we can also pass instead of passing uh, an iterable itself, we can actually pass a sequence of functions and uh, use the lambda function to perform uh, a sequence of functions on particular items. So let's look at a new example, a slightly different one. So we're going to use a NumPy module for this. Don't worry. We're just using it to use the square root function that is present in the NumPy power module. Um, we will be learning about NumPy in a later section. So um, we're going to import this first. And now I'm going to define three functions called square, cube and square root. So once I've defined these, basically they're uh, returning the square, the cube root, uh, the cube and the square root of some integer x. And um, now I'm going to create a list of these for functions that you've just seen. Um, and we're going to uh, use a for loop and we're going to iterate through a range from uh, 0 to 4. 
So, and we're going to pass this and we're going to say that we want to apply some some function we want to apply some function x and we want to return that using this lambda function now what values this x will take is based on whatever functions we've stored in this variable called funcs or funcs and in funcs we have a bunch of functions called square cube and square root that we have defined earlier so what we're going to do is we're going to apply each of these functions to r and r will take the value 0 to 4 and now let's see when we print this what values we get so if you see here we get a list of um, square root, squares, cubes, and square roots for integers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is another way of um, using the map function and lambda functions together to apply multiple different operations to a bunch of iterables. Now for our next example, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that basically what it does is it creates the uppercase of some string that we pass to it, right? So that's what we've done here in this function called to uppercase. So we for, let's first define this function. Now we have a print function basically, which is going to print each object in a particular, um, which is going to print each element of a particular object and is going to, uh, at the end of it, and the end of printing, we're going to give a small space for printing a new line basically. So let's create this also, this print iterator object. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass a string with uh, the letters a, b, and c to this function and we're going to map uh, we're going to apply the uppercase function to this uh, string. Now if you remember string is also an iterable where it's a sequence of one character strings. So this whole string is basically a sequence of one character string a, one character string b and c. So we're going to, so we, we can pass a string as a, a, as an iterable to the map function because it will apply the operations on each of these characters. So let's see what happens when we do the uppercase function. Uh, we apply the upper, uppercase function using the map, uh, using mapping to uh, this string a, b, and c. So if you see, it's created me a list with uh, capital A, capital B, and capital C as we had expected um, because we have applied the list function to the map object. Now, um, in the next step, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a very similar thing. We're just going to, instead of uh, simply mapping and creating a list out of it, we're going to store the map object in uh, a variable called map iterator. We're going to print um, what type of object it is and then we're going to print out each of the elements using the print iterator function that we defined here. So um, let's do this. Now if you see the class, uh, the type of object uh, is of class map and the objects, uh, elements inside the object are A, B and C. Moving on, let's uh, let's look at now a, an example where we're going to pass multiple arguments. Um, so instead of one iterable, we're going to pass multiple iterables now and we're going to apply some sort of an operation. So if you see here, what we have done is we've created two uh, two two uh, sequences. One is a list of some numbers, and another is a tuple of some numbers. So just to show you, let me first copy this here. Um, yeah. So if you see here, I have a list and a tuple, and I'm passing both of these. If you see to this map function, and before that, I have defined a lambda function as the operation that I'm going to apply. And what this does is it takes two arguments x and y, and it returns the product of both of these. Uh, where does it get x and y from? So the x it gets from this. Uh, uh, this sequence which is a list and it takes y from this sequence which is a tuple. So what it's going to do is going to take x as 1 and then y as 5 in the first step and it's going to return the product as 5. And then the next step is going to take 2 as x and then y as 6 and it's going to return the product of that and we're going to get 12 and so on we're going to get 21 and then 32. Um, when we And this is these values are going to be stored in the map iterator uh, which is a map type object and when we use the print iterator function it's basically going to print out uh, whatever results we got um, through this mapping. So let's execute this and as you can see this is the result we got 5, 12, 21 and 32 which is what we wanted. So the next part, the next function that we're going to discuss is the filter function now. Now a filter function is basically again it takes two, two arguments, a function and a sequence and a function basically tests if each element of a sequence is true or not. Now a sequence, the sequence, um, so this filter function will basically take two arguments. So one is the function and this function is basically going to test if each element of a sequence is true or not. And it's going to take another argument called sequence. And uh, this argument sequence is the list or the tuple or basically any sequence and, or iterable that needs to be filtered. And it can be, uh, as I mentioned, it can be sets, lists, tuples or containers of more iterators. And what this function will return is an iterator that is already filtered. Um, so let's look at an example now. So we have this list R, which we've generated, which is basically numbers from minus five to four. 
So if I create this list here, you can see it will create a list of minus 5 to 4. Now, if I wanted to extract only the values that are lesser than 0, well, I can use a for loop and use a if condition to check this, right? So if I did this over here, you can see it gives me, it returns me some list called result, which contains only the values um, lesser than 0, which is basically checked through this condition. What if there was a uh, neat or a more convenient or a more um, organized approach to doing the same thing instead of creating a loop ourselves. What if we defined a function where we are going to do the test or we're going to create the condition and we're going to pass this to a particular function and then apply that particular operation on every object of some sequence. Well, just like mapping, we have a filter function to do this. And in this example, what we're going to use is the lambda function, which takes an argument x and it checks for some condition x lesser than zero. And where it's going to get the x from is some sequence r, um, which which in our case is the numbers from minus 5 to 4. And the filter will basically create a filter object type, which contains uh, only the objects from r that meet this condition. That is, x is lesser than 0. And when we use the list operation on top of it, you will see it creates, it results in a list with the values that have met my condition. So for a second example, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a list which um, contains a bunch of letters and we're going to only extract the vowels from these bunch of letters. So let's look at what we have here. We have some letters D, A, T, J, K, O, P, L and we only want the vowels from this. So we want to filter only the vowels. So we can use that using the filter function by first of all defining a function that returns true if a check is met that um, one of uh, the letter matches one of these letters in this list called uh, letters. And if it doesn't, it returns false. So this is our condition that we've created. Once we create this condition, uh, this function that checks this, we can pass this function and the sequence into the filter function, and then we can list out whatever we get. So you can see our filtered list contains only A and O, which is basically the only vowels that are present in our original list. Finally, we have the reduce function. This reduce function is basically a func tools it's in the func tools module of Python 3.0. And what the reduce function does is it applies a function of two arguments cumulatively to the elements of an iterable. And it optionally, it starts with an initial argument and it returns a single result. So let's first import this function. And once we've imported it, let's use it in this example that we have here. So in this example, what we're going to do is we have some list called numbers, right? What if we wanted to get the, get the sum of each element in this list? Well, we can iterate over it and store it in some variable called total in each step, right? Um, this is what we would typically do. And in this step, what you can see is the loop basically iterates over every valuable in numbers and accumulates them in total. The final result is the sum of all the values, which is the value of 10 over here. In this example, the variable total is what we call an accumulator. And we can apply the reduce function to do the same task. So how do we do it? Let's first of all create a function called my add, where we're going to take two variables uh, two arguments and we're going to return the sum of it. Okay. So let's uh, define this function. And uh, now we have, we have, we have a list called numbers, right? Which contains one, two, three, and four. Now let's do reduce my add to numbers. Now, when I do this, when I use this function, what it will do is it will apply the function of my add. It will take basically uh, each and every element uh, in a sequence. So it will take one and two, then add them together. And then it will create basically what it will do is it'll take one and two, add them together. Then we'll have three. So it'll take three and then the next element, which is three again. So it'll create the sum, which is six. And then it will take six and then it will take the value four and it will give us the result 10. So this is how the reduce function would work. So this is how it will give us the result of 10. As you can see here, I've simply used, I've passed this function where I've defined that I want two uh, arguments to be passed to a function and then the return should be basically the sum. And then I've passed a whole list of like four numbers and I've used the reduce function to basically do this process for four numbers in a step by step manner by taking two at a time subsequently. And my result is, as you can see is correct as you can see here. So let's use the lambda function now to, the, to do the same topic, just do the same task. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to define a lambda function and that's the function I'm going to pass to this reduce. So when I pass this lambda function, which basically takes Two, uh, two arguments x and y and it's going to return the sum of that uh, as x plus y. Now where it's going to get x and y from is in a very in a very neat manner. So it will take first the first two elements one and two. It will then do the sum and it, we get three. Then it will take that same three and then take the next object which is three again 
and then give us 6. Then it will take 6 and then the next element which is 4 and then give us 10. And then the reduce function will output the, the, the single result which is 10 to us. As you can see here. So yeah, this was our video, um, a discussion on map filter and reduce functions in Python. I hope it's a valuable addition to what you already know about lambda and list comprehensions. And as always, do like and subscribe to our channel. Spread the news about this channel so that we can reach for more learners such as yourself. And as always, I hope you learned something from this video and thanks for watching.